Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Grief Drums, and in today's video, I want to take a look at the topic of droning and how it can help you improve your game. Today, I want to cover what I think people do right, what they do wrong, and how you can utilize droning more effectively to help you get more frags and ultimately win the round. This is something that is massively overlooked by a lot of players, um, certainly in the lower elos, and this is the reason why you are not fragging out more than you should be, whether it's countering spawn peaks, whether it's uh, pushing the site, or just generally knowing which site to push. So today, we're going to break it all down. So as I just discussed in the intro there, droning is a huge weapon in your arsenal if you know how to do it correctly. It can really make the difference between winning and losing a game, and is something that you really need to learn to master. These are essentially two free extra lives that you've got, and if you waste them at the beginning of the round during the prep phase, you're not going to do as well in the actual game. So in the background, I've had a clip running, which is it's just from a casual game, it was nothing special, uh, but I felt it really showcased how to drone effectively and what you can gain from doing it correctly. For me, this was done on live stream, and it ended up with nothing more than a bit of a funny clip at the time, a nice little wall bang. But let's break it all down. So the first thing you're going to notice is that I've got advanced drone deployment set to on. And the reasoning for that is that I can use it to bait people. I can use it to throw drones and then move into cover. And there's, there's loads of beneficial reasons to doing this. As I moved up towards the doorway, I actually positioned myself to the side of the door so I can't get wall banged and people can't see my feet. And then I decided to drone in. At this point, I do put my drone in very, very slowly just so that if there is anyone in there, I can move it back out of the room. Uh, keep my drone alive and still move away with that intel before I peek. But then comes the interesting part. This is the first bit of information we can gather properly other than the rumours initially seems to be clear. Now this specific shot showcases that there is no one hiding behind that chest of drawers just in there. I'm also listening for sounds to see if anyone is tucked in. But I can also gather that this wall is not entirely reinforced. So as a jackal, I don't need a thermite. I can actually do something here myself. Learning to spot what you're actually looking at and taking all of the information in is definitely something that takes a bit of time, but let's just watch the clip again at full speed and see how many of you would have noticed that. Now obviously having pointed it out, it does make it a little bit clearer, but it's something to pay attention to. Have a look at stuff like that, not just for people. From there I continue in, I check the bedroom, I'm listening for sounds, but I just push into the site and at this point here, this is where I actually get the proper intel. Now I don't know if you spotted this the first time round, but Alibi is actually on the left of the screen right there. I just managed to catch a slight glimpse of the top of her head and spot that and recognise what it was. Now this clip is from a couple of seasons ago, so it is a little bit more of a sepia tone and more washed out than it actually is now on drones. But nevertheless, I can act on this. There's no one in the bedroom. I push in, uh, I look exactly where she was and shotgun her. Now, because of the way that the drone moved through, she thought she was safe. She didn't realize she'd been spotted. And I seriously doubt she expected to see anyone coming through the wall just next to her. So this next clip is actually taken from Ranked. I am currently watching someone else's drone. They've decided to leave it in the building. I personally don't do this. I will bring it back to spawn once we know where the bomb site is. Just because it gives me two free lives, like I said at the beginning. Uh, I want both my drones. I want to be able to use those in the game. And as you will see from this specific round... It really does benefit me, and personally, I believe it gives us a bit of an advantage to getting the win. I'm not going to take full credit for it, because obviously the other guys were doing their part as well, and, you know, quite rightly so. But nevertheless, the information that we garnered from utilising these two drones was massive. So, as we rappel up onto the roof, the first thing I'm going to want to do once I get to safety is obviously carry out my job as Sledge, and the hatch is already opened by Jackal, so I don't need to do it. I'm instantly going to drone for Jackal and drop it in on the top of Red. We've already got someone peeking down onto the Red stairs, so I'm just moving it around on the top floor, pinging and scanning just to see if I can pick someone up. Now, I wouldn't always do this, it's just in case you miss someone, you might catch the top of their head and the ping will actually locate them for you. Uh, because of where my drone is and because of the relative safety of where I am, it can sometimes be beneficial. Learning when to do it is the biggest difficulty, it really is, purely because of the fact there is a time to scan and there is a time not to. I can't really teach you when that is. I find that, you know, in the dying seconds of the late round or if you're just pushing someone, if a teammate is actually pushing them and about to get that kill, and you just want that last little bit of information or to put the uh, defender off, it can be beneficial then. 
But nine times out of ten, I would actually advocate not scanning at all because if they don't know that you know they're there, you've got the drop on that defender then. From this point, you will have seen that I've actually pushed my drone downstairs because we've asserted control over the top floor completely. Our entire team is up there. We've got control. And then I asked Jackson to keep an eye on that drone for me to stop any rotations coming up. From there, I can go to work upstairs. We've already got someone covering the white stairs, as you can see. And I myself don't have to cover red anymore for the time being. I can instead try and get frags on people that are in the site and work on the information that they've told me. For example, this evil eye is there. Uh, that was picked up by other people, and I can do my job for that. From here, I realize I don't have much information, and I'm peeking through a hole that I don't know where they are. I then see smoke in the corner of the room by throwing my second drone in that I would not have had. But I pick up where he is, and you'll notice that I actually scan him at this point. Now, my logic behind doing this is it's either going to move him out into a line of sight of someone that is watching from the hatch, or alternatively, they're going to know exactly where he is and be able to put a grenade or, you know, something like that to his location. If you play with the same set of guys all the time, you can give them the perfect call. So, you know, if you've broken this room down before and you know that that is normally the mirror spot, you could call that as mirror spot. But if you're playing with randoms or a bunch of friends that you don't often get to play online with, a quick scan isn't going to hurt in this situation because I'm just about to get my drone past him and keep it alive. He's not looking at it. He already knows where the pressure is coming from because he's heard the hatch go open and shots come through. So as I said, there is a time and a place to scan, but you have to be careful when you do it. I notice there's a shield in the room. This could potentially have someone hiding behind it. I notice another evil eye in the room, which could actually affect the plant if we're trying to put that down on the A-bomb site. But because Maestro is in there, if we can frag out and kill him, knowing where he is, he then can't utilize his evil eyes against us. So I push down this way with the diffuser, um, along with Jackal just behind me, and we both set up a bit of a crossfire to try and take out the people that we've seen. As you saw there, Maestro goes down, and I hear that Smoke is down as well because I've managed to relay that information. The plant goes down safely, and just as I'm running away, I actually die. Now, this isn't the end of the round for me, not by a long shot, because although the plant is down and these guys are trying to set up a crossfire onto Jaeger and where he could potentially be coming from, feeding that information to them is still vital. So I look at where they are, I have told them where Jaeger was, it is kind of down to them, but if I can provide any more intel, I do. So, I jump onto the drones, and as you can see from this one that has been left behind, we know exactly where he is. We are watching him, we are passing that information on, and as you saw, I was trying to scan at the end to A, scare him, and B, assist my team in positioning exactly where he is on the map. Um, you know, you don't have to rely on calls if there's a red ping, so there is a time and a place for it. The next aspect of droning that I want to cover today is environmental destruction with drones. Um, keeping an eye out as to the environment and the actual game and what is happening can give massive, massive clues as to where people are or what is going on. Now at this point here, you'd be forgiven for thinking there was no one there, but in fact I can actually gain a lot of information from this one still. Do you see all that debris just there? Just at the bottom left that is moving? It's literally, it is just floating bits of paper. Where has that come from? Well, if you've got map knowledge and you've played this game before, you will know that there is a load of money just inside of the cash room. That cash room money has actually glitched through the wall and showcases that there is someone on the table inside of that room, or certainly near it. They have knifed that money or disturbed that money and it is pushed through the wall and told me that someone is there. Now the best thing about this is I, t I try and look to see who it is, but I don't want to lose my drone, but let's face facts here. I know there's someone there, he doesn't know that I know that he's there, if that makes sense. So I can actually push on him and there is nothing he can really do about it right now. I can get good line of sight onto him because I know where he is and he's not going to have moved away because he thinks he's safe right now. He's tucked away in his little hidey hole, he's really happy with himself and I can just wait for that line of sight to appear. I can cover the angle to stop the rotation and I actually just get him there and then because I knew where he was. In this game, you don't need to just get a line of sight with your drones on people. You don't need to put it directly into a room to know that someone is there. Audio cues can be a massive help. If you drive your drone near to somewhere and you can hear someone on the right hand side of the wall, just stop your drone for a second, get your bearings, figure out exactly what it is you can hear and where you can hear it because that can be massively beneficial. 
You will very often see in clips from people like Macy J that they don't actually always drive their drone straight into the site. They sometimes just leave it outside of doorways and have a listen. And that is something that I think a lot of people forget. Now, frustratingly, I have actually got loads more things about drones that I want to discuss, but I've just looked at the timer for this video and realized we're over 10 minutes already. Um, there are so many more aspects to cover here. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know and I'll, uh, I'll potentially take a look at covering more things about this and hopefully getting you even more kills in the game through the intel that you can gain. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting that thumbs up as every like really does help. If you didn't enjoy it, hit the dislike and let me know why down in the comments below. I know that a lot of you are here for top three tips of the week. Um, I have been working, unfortunately. So with Christmas and work, it's been a bit of a nightmare. However, I am working on some really cool stuff for you. And I know that sounds like a cop out. It's really not. Please bear with me because I really think you're going to like this one. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, till next time, stay reckless and relentless. Yeah.